Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing a mono green Painter's Servant Dark Depths combo deck. So that's quite a mouthful and a lot of different things. So let's have a breakdown of what we've got going on. So this is kind of the important section of the deck in a big way, really. So we have the Thespian Stage and Dark Depths, which is like one of our primary win conditions. We also have the Urza Saga, which allows us to do a beatdown plan, but it also finds us Grindstone. So when relevant, we can then use our Saga to get a Grindstone and paint a combo kill. What this does allow us to do is use our tutors like Crop Rotation and Elvish Reclaimer to go and find a thing that will eventually get us a Grindstone, which is kind of interesting. We've got ourselves a Life from Alone package in here, so we can actually play a bit of a longer game. We've got some tools like Maze of If and Wasteland to sort of grind through our opponent's resources a little bit. And we have a one of Echoing Deeps, which can become a copy of something else in our graveyard. So we can technically get two Maze of If going. So that's kind of interesting. We've got a bunch of fast mana, so we can do the whole turbo thing with our either our Painted Servant Grindstone combo or with our Thespian Stage Dark Depths combo. So we've got that going for us. We've got some protection for either our Painted Servant or our Merit Lage in the form of Legacy's Quick Reflexes. And also Painter means our Veil of Summer is going to be able to protect our creature as well. We've got a little bit of Once Upon a Time action to try and glue things together. And we've got a few silver bullets in the land like Cavern of Souls, Bajuka Bog, Sajiri Step as well. And a very, very small package. So we've got two Mox Diamonds a Pith and Needle, an Expedition map. That's kind of what we're getting with our Urza Saga, apart from the Grindstone we've already mentioned. We're not going into Shadow Spear territory or anything like that, which might be an error. But we'll see and we'll find out how it goes. Because we're kind of a little bit grindier than like a Turbo Depths build, maybe we should be having a Shadow Spear in there. I'm not sure. This is the list I was sent, and it's quite a wild one. If I was to put the Shadow Spear in, I'd probably just remove a Legolas' Quick Reflex. This is not a card that's impressed me that much, to be honest. Sideboard-wise, we've got a Caracas for matchups where we need that. We can board it in. We've got loads of tutors for it. We've got some removal because, you know, we're mono green deck, so we need some removal we can get it. So playing some dismembers. To beat the combo deck, so it's just going to roll us pretty hard. We've got some migrate traps. We've got some graveyard hate in the endurance. And we've got some force of vigors to blow up some artifacts and enchantments. Things like Blood Moon. And that's pretty much the deck. I think there's probably some streamlining that could be done here. But we're going to jam it as is and see where we land. So remember to like and subscribe and let's get into it. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, this is one of the things that could definitely happen with our deck where we have half of each of our pieces and we don't really go anywhere. So this is an easy mulligan. All right, this one seems fine. Uh, we can keep this. We can bin the Bajuka Bog. Sorry, not the Bajuka Bog. We, uh, we can bid the Bajuka Bog to the Mox Diamond, but in terms of what we're putting back, it's quite obviously going to be the Quick Reflexes, I think. Here. That's the least impactful card. So we can bin the Bajuka Bog to the Mox and get ourselves a Life from Alone going on turn one. It means we have to wait on a turn for our Elvish Reclaimer, but Elvish Reclaimer plus lands equals Merit Lage. So we need to just secure our lands, and Life from Alone can do that for us. A Lotus Petal and a Bayou. So our opponent's probably on the the Epic Storm or some kind of Turbo Chain of Smog deck. Okay, nope. It's a Reanimate deck with the Green Splash. Okay, that makes sense too. They have to go now. We have the Bajuka Bog in hand. They obviously know that we have this. So they're going to put Galter into play. And Galter's going to let them put in whatever card they have in their hand as well. A Grizzle Brand. Yeah, we're not winning that. Okay, a quick one to kick us off. So let's play some Endurances. And a Krakus is probably going to be pretty reasonable here. Against Makes of the Moon, we might want Dismembers. I believe our opponent could have those. But we can win through it with our Painter combo anyway. So maybe we're more incentivized to try that. Uh, Verda Summer is good here. We don't really want these quick reflexes because our opponent's not going to be targeting our stuff anyway. Do like the veils. Pith and Needle seems a little bit weak. Like, you can name Grizzlebrand, but if Grizzlebrand's in play, that's probably pretty bad for us anyway. Uh, the Once time, Upon a Times can help us find the Endurances, so that's really nice. Sajiri Step is useful to push through a blocker. 
if we need to just hit them for 20 in one go. So I think it's probably the needle here. We want to keep our maximum amount of combo pieces. And I think with the fast mana is going to be useful here too. All right. Uh, what does our hand actually do? So we have a turn one grindstone. We don't have a green card is the problem. So our opponent just gets to go on turn two. So we can play Painted Servant on turn two. If we think our opponent isn't going to get us on turn one, but if they do anything, they can disrupt our Endurance or our Painted Servant, whichever one is going to be relevant to them, if they're not killing us on turn one with a combo. So I think we have to mulligan to like crop rotation or something like that. Uh, what does this one do? This is a turn two Merit Lage, right? So it's one, this, 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 this. Uh, yeah, turn two Merit Lage I'll keep. And we throw away the excess Dark Depths, I think, here. And we're throw away the Thespian stage here. We want to keep the Caracas because that can bounce some of their scary guys if we need to. So I think we are turn one stage. Mox pitch stage. Next turn, we can Marilage. However, if our opponent discards our spirit guy, we don't get to do that. There is a grief. Sure. All right, goodbye, other spirit guide. So we need to find another piece of fast mana. So another Mox or a spirit guide will give us the Marilage. Right, they're cracking their marsh flats, which could mean that they've got something here that can end us. I'm not playing anything that interesting. Uh, so we can't wasteland them here. We can't put our Merit Lage into play right now. So we're going to play this Caracas so that if they have anything that we want to bounce, we can do that. And then next turn, we can make our Merit Lage. Oh, okay, they're scooping up. Interesting. Uh, we kind of just got a free one there. I don't know how many free lunches like that we're going to get. I don't think I want to be boarding these things in just to deal with... Um, a potential Megs of the Moon. Like the black-green reanimate build that I played before that I'd seen doing all right with a few 5-0 lists, that didn't have Megas of the Moon in, so I didn't really want to play around that. Um, we have turn, we have no turn zero thing here, and our Bajookabog is in hand, which isn't great. I think we want to mulligan this one to have a green source. Um, okay, so this is a turn three Merit Lage. That's too slow in this matchup. Unless our opponent keeps... Okay, they've gone to five cards. No, I think we just... All right, we'll keep this one. So we have a green card for our Endurance. And then we have half of each combo. And then we probably throw back these two. In this case of... Would I rather have a Wasteland here or... So we could keep the Wasteland. If our opponent's on like, low resources, we could maybe Wasteland things out from underneath them. So we could throw back the stage, but that's got half of our combo gone then. The Painted Servant can actually beat down. I think we're going to throw back the Wasteland here. If our opponent is only on five cards, they're unlikely to be able to assemble their combo and disrupt us in one turn. All right, maybe uh, I spoke too soon. So they're probably going to take this Endurance. Are we supposed to once upon a time? What does that actually do for us? I think we just let this hit and we have once upon a time as a mystery thing they might need to play around. They're going to take the endurance. All right. If this is just a grief reanimate grief hand and we can probably live with that. All right. We can probably deal with this. Let's try and get a land here. An Urza Saga. That is a land, isn't it? That is a good land. All right. So we're going to lose our grief. Uh, sorry, our uh, painted servant to the grief. And uh, we've got clock against us but it's not that terrifying okay um like do we just one two three this and try and just grindstone them out and that's acceptable so turn two we make the painter turn three we grindstone them out the game they got thoughts these here they do okay i'm gonna take this painter now that's awkward that makes this as a saga play a lot worse we're not going to be able to get any tokens unless we draw something good did not draw something good so by so we need like a bit of fast mana which you can include the ancient team would have been fine then all right at least once our reclaimers up and running that doesn't care about 
uh, the graveyard anymore because we can just Paducah bog them instant speed. But we can go and get an expedition map, and that gives us the pieces we need to make a Merit Lage. Depending on what we draw. Oh, right, our opponent's just off of it. Interesting. Because what we do is we have a choice about to happen where we choose if we sacrifice this in response to the trigger or we float mana and hold up the ability to activate Reclaimer for the Duke of Bog, which is kind of a tough one. But our opponent didn't give us that choice. We just kind of got there. Just reanimating grief and doing nothing else is not really good enough a lot of the time. Let's go to round two. We managed to get away with one there. Our deck produces a Merit Lage pretty sharpish here, so we can keep this one. An underground sea. There's a lot of different flavors of underground sea decks, so who knows which one this is? An Urza Saga. That's not a bad way of starting this game off, is it? An Urza Saga. And a Mox Diamond. Let's get rid of. I think it's a Sajiri step. Because this is green mana if our Mox Diamond gets crunched. I'm going to play this Grindstone and give our opponents some stuff to think about. So we're holding up crop rotation. So we've got Paducah Bog if our opponent's on some sort of reanimated deck. We can also cycle this away. This might be worth a daze from our opponent. It's worth a force of will. That's pretty exciting. So our opponent is likely to be some sort of scam style list here. A Veil of Summer. It's an interesting one. Mm, are we supposed to play out this Besaju? Rather than exposing our Lesbian stage. Now I think we would play the stage in case you draw any fast mana. There's definitely a decision there. We are exposing ourselves to Wasteland slightly. A Bayou. Okay. So Bug Beans is the impression I'm getting right now. We can play out the Besaju so we can do Veil of Summer and Once Upon a Time. Slow milling out the Beans player is sometimes a thing you actually can do as well. This is going to be a Bowmasters. They're going to ping us here. Uh, we can stop them getting a guy here and cycle for a new card. So they do end up getting a guy here. But they don't ping us for one. And we get a fresh card instead of this Veil. Lorien revealed. Our opponent's deck should be pretty weak to Merit Lage combo. Ponder from our opponents. So we can do a once upon a time end of turn. If our opponent doesn't have access to a removal spell from Merit Lage, they're more likely to let's have that. Okay, we have a Painted Servant as well now if we want one. Interesting. I wonder what that one black mana was for. So we can make this with no protection. Or we could make the Painted Servant into what is quite obviously a Fatal Push type effect over there. Hmm... I'm going to go for this because if we do the other combo, we lose a bunch of our permanents. So we name black here. We get to dodge snuff out if they're running it. And we also get to make our Veil of Summers a lot better. They did not cast Fatal Push there. That's interesting. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. But this is not looking great. Truth be told. So I normally have one to two of those in their deck. Um, would I rather hold up a Legolas's Quick Reflexes in case I have a Borrower or a Reclaimer just to have that active next turn? I think we're just going to hold up the Reflexes. That's quite a suspicious attack from our opponent there. Maybe they have a Sorcery Speed answer. Can't quite think what that would be. A Sauron's Ransom, you say? Alright, let's give them Merc Tide and Days here. Like, I don't think it really matters. Alright, yep, yeah, so took the pile with the Brainstorm in. Alright, so we get to make a 2020. Probably only got one mana over there. Oh, I really have a Stifle. That's not going to work here. They need to Stifle the activation of the Thespian stage. Alright. So they could have bought one more turn there if they just Stifled the right ability. It's a trick that a lot of people get caught out on. But it's a good learning experience, I suppose. Endurance is pretty reasonable here. I don't think we want any of these things. Like Pernicious Deed 
and stuff like that. It's very good against our sort of grindstone painter angle. They do have wastelands. Maybe we want Pith and Needle just so we can play around our opponent's wasteland when that's relevant. I don't like crop rotation against the deck full of counter spells and stuff, so I think we're just going to run it like this and go in. I don't really like our once upon a time dependent hand here. I think it's fine. I think I will keep this, but I'm not thrilled about it. Alright, let's cast this without paying his mana cost and see what we can find. Dark Depths, Endurance, Urza Saga. I like the Saga here. That's pretty potent with the old um, Life from Loan. So we're going to play this one a little bit slower though. We're going to lead off on the basic forest. And next time we'll play the Saga and we can play the Painter alongside it if we want to. And then just start cranking out Constructs. Our opponent's probably going to have Dress Down in their deck. So this might be the turn where they play up the Beanstalk. We can Besage it if that's what we really want to do here. Are we going to beat this sort of card advantage? Uh, we need this to resolve first. There we go. Right, we're going to get back this Besage you anyway, so it's, it's fine. So now we have a reasonable life from the loam available if we want it. Just go and get this Besage you back. All right. We had the Secret Spirit Guide to pay for days if that was a thing we needed to do. A Wasteland. Okay, well, we've already shown them we have a Life from the Loam. I mean, they know we've got a land for it as well. Let's this. And leave our graveyard popped out here. Let's loan back these lands. Force Negation would be pretty good here. They did not have it. Okay. So, our opponent's wasteland didn't really do anything there. An Orcish Bowmasters, that's a pretty small little creature. You have to worry about that for some time. You start cranking out the sagas soon. I don't think we're dredging life from the loam. Four mana. Is this a Merktide? Exile in their graveyard, just a 3 3. It is. That's a bit of a desperation play, to be honest with you. Veil of Summer. It's interesting. When we get to Veil and Once Upon a Time this turn cycle, that seems alright. So this is a 5 power attack. That's pretty reasonable. Right, so we can cycle this Veil if we need to just to draw a card. Right, they're activating their Polluted Delta. So we're going to take a little bit of damage this turn. Then we get to start cranking with the artifact guys. So we're going to hold this Veil of Summer to protect our painter. Once upon a time. Um, guess we'll take another painter. So we don't need to start cranking with these anymore. We can just deploy a saga here. Make a painter, make a painter. Hold up the spirit guide. And do both. If one gets eaten by removal, then the other can get saved by a, a veil. So we're representing a kill next turn. It's going to be a Sauron's Ransom. A Force of Vigor. Let's say no to that one. They have a Force. Okay. That's pretty good. So I'm going to have to deploy this Maze of Ith, I believe. I would like to have access to... So we only have one grindstone left in our deck, so we have to be pretty careful with it. One, two, three. Force of Vigor. Uh, sorry, a Force of Negation, which is a hard cast Force of Will. Hard cast Force of Will, sure. Let's play this Maze of Ith. If we dredge and hit the other grindstone, that is really annoying. But Merit Age is pretty good here. All right, Wasteland is nice. Yikes, so we're going to take three here. Our opponent's got one card in hand. All right, they're playing. Thoughts easier, they can take our Pithy Needle, that's fine. Okay, so we've kind of got this board under wraps now. We'll dredge this. We didn't hit the, low, the grindstone. Okay, so we need a Saga, a Maze, and probably... So another Saga is probably fine here 
get those going. Let's play out the maze here, just to buffer our life total a bit. My opponent has a wasteland here. That's obviously going to be terrible news for us, but they're drawing off the top. They obviously have a bunch of cantrips, though, and they have uh, Witherbloom Command as well. So it's just another friend for the Merc Tide. All right. That's terrible news. Hmm. 288, guys. Our life total is smaller than 8. So I'm not a big fan of where this game has ended up. Maybe it's not to happen for mana means if we draw a grindstone now we can't put a win on. How we... None of these lands get us anywhere. So we need to draw a regular card. Veil of Summer. If we play out this saga, hold up a veil, it doesn't really go anywhere. No, this game is over. Alright, match is tied. I think I'm happy with how I've sideboarded. We're just going to go in again. Force of Vigor was pretty good. Um, yeah, we got some nice tools here to work with. I'll keep this. This is a turn three Merit Lage. If we want it. That's Yavimaya. Let's play out this grindstone. And I don't think I want to play this Mox Diamond just yet. I'd rather use it as an additional piece of mana later on. I don't I'd rather not discard a Thespian stage. We can avoid it. Okay, I don't mind discarding that though. Discard this. This means that we have a um, Legolas's quick reflexes when the time comes. Uh, cracking in the end step. Uh, sorry, in the second main phase. It's just going to be an up the beanstalk. That's fine. We can beat the beanstalk. Let's play the Dark Depths. In our opponent's upkeep, we'll make our 2020 to dodge wasteland. Right, we have a split second way of protecting it that may not do anything against our opponent's ways of killing it. Like they, they usually have a brazen borrower somewhere in the deck. That's not every list, but quite often you'll see one. And that's the thing we're trying to dodge with our quick reflexes. But I think just putting a win on the stack is pretty good. We can always just go for the combo again anyway because we have Expedition Map and Thespian Stage. So we're trying to dodge Shoulders Edict plus Surgical Extraction here. Right, so there's the Edict. Rest in pieces, Merit Lage. At some point we can just draw into Painter and just get up in that way as well. They're going to Surgical Extract. All right, they're going to hit this, are they? Well, that's pretty disgusting. All right. Let's play an Expedition Map and pass. We can go and fetch a Dark Depths using our Elvish Spirit Guide. Right, so cracking fetch land. Just going to be an Uro. This Uro is annoying because it puts them above 20 life. Alright, now it won't, so that's good. Mystic Sanctuary putting the Soldier's Edict on top. Right, well that's horrible news for us. That means we're probably getting an Urza's Saga here. Right, a Murktai Regent, how big is this going to be? A 4-4, four, four. that's pretty small. So I think we need to get ourselves an Urza's Saga here. That's the way this game works out nicely for us. Alright deck, uh, we have another Urza's Saga. So we can start popping these out. I don't think we need to Thespian Stage to copy it. But it's within the realms of possibility of something we'll do. We can always copy their tropical island. Alright. The wasteland's kind of annoying. So I can do, wait till it gain, learns the ability. And then with this on the stack. Uh, so we could turn our... I don't, I don't think we have anything else to do here, really. So let's just get ourselves an Urza Saga. Painter Servant, that's an interesting one. As a saga is disappearing land is not necessarily ideal for us. But we can paint a servant and try and dodge some removal. But we know they've got the shoulders edict in hand. So the Legolas Quick Reflex is once again not being a very useful card. Like it's very useful against blue white control decks. That's where Legolas' quick reflexes shines. But that's not what we're looking at here. Alright. 
These are both ticking up. Do I just want to loam here? I don't think our constructs are actually going to do very much here. So we'll get a stage, a depth, and a basic. And if we can get this in, we can put a painter in. All right, they've got a cantering for support. I was going to say, if we can get the land there, then we can put a painter in. And then they have two things they need to remove. Otherwise, they lose the game because the painter will combo off with the grindstone. Or the marinage will be a 2020. So we had a chance there. Also, if we start making tokens, we can sack those so that our marinage can live. All right, the wasteland is pretty good here. They'll probably hit our Thespian stage that is an Urza Saga. They should do that before we untap, I believe. They could always just hit our Yavimaya and just really cause us some trouble. I don't believe we're winning this game. Interesting they've gone for the legitimate saga. Yeah, this Bug Beans deck is the best control deck in the format. For sure. And they're controlling us pretty effectively. Let's put a grindstone in. And get that chugging along. So we get depth, stage. And I guess we need a Maze of Ith at this point. I guess we could have got a Pithy Needle there so that we can make sure our Maze of Ith sticks around. That was probably a mistake from us there. Yeah, I think we're supposed to get the fifth needle there. Right, not a wasteland. Another Merc Tide. How big is this going to grow? Two more. Okay. So we're in a very similar situation to the situation we were in last game. Where we lost. So that's not ideal. Let's say no to Merc Tide Regent. Oh, we're not dredging there. Basic forest, not the most helpful. Play a thespian stage here. Play out this painter in black. We're trying to dodge the wasteland here. If our opponent has like a couple of instances they can rattle off into a merc tide, then it might be all right. All right, so what are we going to see here? Shara's Edict here. So don't kill us, please, opponent. Nile spell bomb. Okay. Like by getting the grindstone, having the painter, we did force out some removal out, but that just might mean our opponent's got more removal. But we do get to put Merit Lage into play. Pernicious deed. Okay, that doesn't actually bother us. Fail is unlikely to be that useful. Right, and our opponent's upkeep will make this to dodge wasteland. Although we're dead to Wasteland regardless, right? Wasteland or Shoulder's Edict kills us here. But if they don't have it, we get to kill them on the, the swing back here. Shoulder's Edict. Each opponent sacrifices a creature token. So this does not target, so we can't use Veil of Summer. This will only protect us for a little bit. We just got beaten up there. Pretty awkward. This Legolas's Quick Reflexes was terrible. We didn't really have anything else to board in for it, really. Like, I guess we could have boarded in some dismembers. I wasn't expecting our opponent's multi regents to be that small, really. Okay, we are one and one. Let's get around three. Um, what does our hand do here? It makes like we can just goldfish a painter kill, or we can just try and do as a saga stuff, depending on if we think our opponent's going to be fast or slow. And there's a Saga deck. Uh, I think... Okay. Uh, I guess that means we don't necessarily need... Uh, we can just play this out. Play out the Grindstone now. Alright, let's see what flavour of Urza Saga this is. Naked Urza Saga probably means... A Ancient Tomb or... Okay, City of Traitors. Okay, this is going to be a big colourless based combo deck. Possibly, like, with some blue in. Khan, the great creator. Yeah, that's that's pretty good against what we've got in play right now. So, we are on Urza Saga beatdown now. What horrors beyond human comprehension are we looking at here? Oh, our opponent was a serum powder. A serum powdered as well. So, we knew what they were, were going into this one. If I'd have clicked that tab. A basalt monolith. Okay. That probably means our opponent's going to try and combo us next turn. 
with that Basalt Monolith. We've already cast a spell, so we don't get to Once Upon a Time here. So we're going to play our Urza Saga, get that going. We're going to play out our Painter's Servant. Uh, I guess we name Black. And then we get to pressure their Khan, potentially. But they've got an Urza Saga ticking up here. This could be a... A key so they can untap the monolith because they probably only have the monolith in the board, not the the basalt monolith, not the grim monolith. Because grim monolith you want in your main deck so that you can actually power stuff out because it's acceleration. Whereas basalt monolith is more of a combo piece that interacts with some of the other stuff you've got going on. So it's better to find rather than just have that in your deck hanging around. There's a key. They're going to find another tool. They have a paradox engine or something in the board. Right, a Mox Opal. And we're playing as a Saga. So they are technically dead unless they got an Emrakul from what we have in play right now. Because we can attack the Khan and do some other bits and pieces then. Okay, Paradox Engine. So they do need to have like a payoff here. So something like the One Ring and we can scoop. Let's see what they're going for. Mystic Forge. This isn't quite as uh, deterministic as the the One Ring is. So they can run out of spells to cast it. So we have to let them go through the motions. We can't just scoop. But if they found themselves a One Ring, then we could have scooped and saved ourselves a bit of time. Rather than making you sit through this tapping and untapping thing, I'm just going to cut to when something relevant happens. Our opponents found the one ring here. So what they've got on board now is enough, so I'm just going to concede here. So Mystic Forge can like hit run around a land for a bit, whereas every one spell like grows exponentially if it's the ring. Alright, so I would like some Mind Break Traps and some Force of Vigors here. If our opponent has an Emrakul to hard cast in their deck, then the Grindstone Painter combo doesn't feel great. Uh, Bajukwog, probably not that relevant here. The Sejiri Step, not relevant. Uh, quick Reflexes, not relevant. Veil of Summer, not relevant. And that gives us 59 cards. So I'll have Endurance to pressure our opponent's life total. Is there any other lands that we can trim here? Cavern, that's just a bit of fixing for us, isn't it? I would quite like to be able to waste and lock our opponent. Do I want some more endurances? They are pretty handy for just beating our opponent down. I think they're better than the once upon a times. Like we need to be able to pressure a Khan, because they'll probably they quite often they'll do a Khan and then pass, and then we need to answer them right there and then. Um okay, we'll keep this. This is a turn three goldfish with force of vigor. I don't think we get better hands than this. We will need to find another piece of mana, is the one thing we're missing from this equation. Uh, although if we find another green card, then we can obviously crop rotate away the uh, a land into like a Yavimaya or something. Alright. That wasn't the one. So... Let's just jam our painter on black. Oh, what am I doing? We should have named it on green. That was a mistake. We name it on green, that answers the problem that I was just talking about. I'm not having a land. Paradox Engine. Let's just smash these both. Okay, we need to find a land that taps for mana here. We did not find a land that taps for mana. That's a little kick, isn't it? Yeah, we misplayed this one. We, If we'd have named green with this, we could have pitched one of these other cards. And we would have been absolutely fine. So, we have a grindstone in hand. So we get a Mox Diamond, I think. Let's get rid of the Maze of Ith, which we probably could have sideboarded out, to be honest. And we'll play out our land. Play out some artifact and some stuff. We'll tap for one, and we'll hope we get another turn. Yeah, we just punted this game with the name of the painted servant. We deserve to lose. Sorry, deck. We still need to find a land to try and win the game. But we've at least put ourselves in a slightly better position. 
Right, our opponent's played an Ancient Tomb. They're going to nine. A Serum Powder. Okay. And a Khan the Great Creator. Okay. Understood opponent. Imagine if we'd have played this game correctly and we could have uh, gone to game three by now. That would have been nice. Right, take out our Mox Diamond. That's pretty bad news for us. So all of their mana is mana that uh, doesn't really help them out. So if we attack them with two creatures, it doesn't change how many Ancient Tombs they can activate. So if we just attack them for one here, that shuts off all three Ancient Tombs. And then we can flip the Re Reclaimer into a 3-4, as well as getting our... Dark Depths combo online if we want it. There's a Sag from our opponents. What they can do is they can... Okay, Lines are Diamond as well. They can animate something with their Khan to have a blocker. That's pretty effective. Right, we have a Khan activation using the Lines are Diamond mana. For Ensnaring Bridge. Interesting. So we have two choices here. We can go and get ourselves an Urza's Saga and start working towards a pith needle to deal with this Khan. Or we can get the Thespian stage and just have the ability to kill our opponent with a Besage you down the line. I think we have to do the Ezra Saga plan. And the Grindstone. So I think what we're doing now is turning this Cradle into a different green source because if we turn off our opponent's Ancient Tombs they don't really get to do as much. So this is a bit of a weird play. So we're going to get ourselves our own Ancient Tomb, I think. Oh no, we need a green source, really, don't we? Well, if we've got an Ancient Tomb, we can go fetch up a green source when we need one. How useful is this saga? All right, now I think we're going to get the um, Ancient Tomb to make things easier to activate in future. Maybe that's wrong. Like our plan here is that our opponent runs out of and stone bridge stuff to do. Because they can't tap their Ancient Tombs. Mike Synth Lattice. Okay. Interesting. This game is not as over as it may first appear. Rename Khan the Great Creator here. And the Echoing Deeps can come in tapped as a copy of something. Does that matter? Uh, we can have another as a saga, which can thin our deck towards Elvish Spirit Guide. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, so our opponent has two mana available right now, plus whatever they get off of this as a saga. A manifold key. That's pretty good. We're just trying to jam them up so they can't dump everything out. But Elvish Spirit Guide and Besager get us out of here. We could have won this game like a million times ago. Okay, so there's one of the things we require to win this game. So we just need to find one of our two Besages. The One Ring. That's pretty good. Alright, we'll get Expedition Map. Testament Stage. Right, our opponent doesn't seem to have a lot of... They said that they believe their current out is us decking first. Which is good news. Because our out will be in our hand before we deck. Because we have two Besages, so we at least get to attack, attempt to attack twice. So they should be able to cast any of the cards in their deck. Which will stop us attacking with our Painted Servant and Elvish Reclaimer. A lovely basic land, we'll have you in play, because why not? Alright, a Basalt Monolith from our opponent. Which hadn't punted this game on like turn two. There's a Saga, this can thin out a Mox Diamond. So we get closer to drawing our Besage before our opponent maybe has something that can interact with what we're doing here. We need to attack twice as well. Mindbreak Trap is unlikely to do anything in this situation. It is a spell we can potentially cast though. And Endurance. So we need to find our other Spirit Guide and a Besage. Crop rotation, isn't it? Yavimaya. Uh, we don't want to play the Yavimaya because our opponent's Ancient Tombs. Like, it's unlikely that it matters, but we may as well stop our opponent from having 
That is a thing. We can also try and deck our opponent by presaging their Mike Sense Lattice and then endurancing our Graveyard in. Which is a ridiculous way to play the game. But it's all we have. Paradox Engine. Okay. Life from the Lame isn't the one. Just got the other mine because you don't want our opponent to have mana off of their ancient tombs. What a silly game. Alright, opponents. Our opponent was curious as to what our out was here. So I've told them I don't think it's really going to make a difference. I don't believe they've got main deck pity needle effects. Alright, so we've got two of the things we need. Just 29 more cards to draw through. Mystic Forge. Uh, that, that doesn't do anything for us here. We just go and discard this crop rotation. I have no idea how layers work. I'm pretty sure that our cards are not black due to the painter. Okay, wasteland and pass. My opponent is drawing cards with their one ring now. That is interesting. Are they going to play another one ring? Or are they just going to try and wombo us here? Like Paradox Engine and the One Ring means they can get us. But I'm just curious what their their out is. If they got... Like Emrakul doesn't do it because of their own Snaring Bridge. Do they have a main deck Walking Ballista? That's probably okay here. Mystic Forge. Sure. Leyline of the Void. With art that I don't think I've seen before. Another one ring. We did not draw the thing we required. Get rid of the dark depths. So we can always just try and grindstone our opponent out if we think there is no Emrakul on our opponent's deck. So we would take out... Actually, no, we can't even do that, right? Because the, the Khan... Yeah, so we have to just do the attack line, right? Okay, another mind break trap. And get rid of this grindstone. What a ridiculous game. Okay. 24 cards left in our deck. You have a mind I'm not playing. I can just go into the graveyard. Paradox engine. Untapping stuff that they're not tapping. I wish I hadn't discarded that life from the loan now because it makes me click through it every turn. Still, we wait. I was not expecting to play a 30-odd turn game today, but here we are. Can we draw the thing? No, we can't. Another Elvish Spirit Guide. That's kind of interesting. So we can make enough power to kill in one swing as soon as we draw the thing. Alright, that is interesting actually. Um, I guess we're not going to need all of these Reclaimers. Khan the Great Creator. Unable to create right now. An Elvish Reclaimer. Let's grab one of these. Another car. Painter's Servant. And we have two Spirit Guys now, so I will just put this Reclaimer into play. So now once we find our combo, or uh, not a combo, our Beseju, we get to just win the game. It's not the one. Dismember on one of our guys. Yep. Yeah. That's what our opponent's been drawing to, I see. Force of Vigor that looks pretty weird. Uh, we'll get rid of a Paint of Servant. So what we can do as well now is we can blow up the Lattice with the, the Bastaju. And then we can Force of Vigor in our opponent's upkeep to take everything else out and kill them. So we have two potential lines here. Obviously it all hinges on us drawing a Besage you. Okay. So if we Besage you this Lattice, then we get to kill the Ensnaring Bridge and... and what? Does it matter? The Ley Line? Or if we Besage you this now, if we hit this, we unlock all of our other things. Oh wow, I really hate trying to resolve stuff underneath thingy. So now we have all of our spells back. We get rid of this and we get rid of 
from his ley line. All right, <laughs> we got there. What a ridiculous game that we punted really early on. Um, I don't think we need Maze of this based on what I've seen here. So that gives us, what, uh, another Once Upon a Time? Uh, Force of Vigor is a card we need in order to play the game. I will keep this hand. Any other land gives us Merit Lage combo. Opponent's mulligan to five. So I'm liking the look of this Force of Vigor. So turn two, we, we tap our Dark Depths and our Yavimaya. Then we use our Spirit Guide to crop rotate into a um, Depths. And then we just get to go. I don't really want our opponent to have a ring here. That's really bad. They did not have a ring. Interesting. I will do it on our opponent's turn. We might get more green cards. Um, all right. I'm just going to waste our opponent here first. And then we're going to take out their permanents in their upkeep. And I guess we just pitch this and stick to our plan. Right, so we get to kill our opponent in two turns. And we strip them out of permanence. Right. I think we managed to claw our way back into a win here. Unless our opponent does something bananas right now. Which is something the deck is able to do. The key is not that bananas, thankfully. Another key. Okay. That should be the game, I think. Green. Green. Cast crop rotate. Get rid of this. Go to Thespian stage. Target this. Pitch this. Make a 2020. Phew. GG opponent, that was, that was quite the slog. Uh, all right, let's go to round four. We are two and one. I do not like this opening hand. We're going to mulligan this one. Yeah. We have a combo. I think we just throw away the grindstone and forget about it. All right, we're just going to get reanimated on. Maybe, maybe not. Stalactite Stalker, that's not too scary. Merit Lady should clock before this does. Uh, they try and interact with our Elvish Reclaimer. We don't actually need this to assemble our combo. Sure, so Daze. Just slow our opponent down and hope that they don't have Wastelands. Yep, just two this turn. And a fine amount of damage to take. Reanimating our Reclaimer. That's kind of annoying. Hmm. So, trying to waste down our opponent just gives them a bigger threat. So I think the plan here is play an expedition map and just see if we can goldfish them with the combo. So they have to hold up the wasteland here and it comes into play untapped. They have a wasteland. Okay, that's pretty. They're going to snap it off. They are. That's acceptable. And then a ponder. So if they find another wasteland, they get to reclaim us into the dirt. This wasteland also grows their Elvish Reclaimer. Uh, sorry, their Stalactite Stalker. It will grow their Reclaimer if they find another one. Yep, so the clock is advancing. A Besaju. Is that what I'm about here? We play out this stage and pass holding up mana for expedition map. Not a wasteland, that's good to see. And they're attacking with the reclaimer. So this is six damages. It's quite a lot of damages. A stalactite stalker. So this is through this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the lethal damage our opponent is showing us. Which means we need to do something about this. So I guess we get Maze of Ithra. That. That's at least an option we have to prevent four damage. And we have a crop rotation to go with it. So that's really nice, actually. So we can't block this. We can block this. So we could see if they... We could basically just say, let's hope they don't have a counter spell. And just try and crop rotate into Yavimaya. And then do the combo. Block this. Take four, five, six. And then kill them on the backswing. If we play the Maze of Ith here and we, and we stop this, yeah, that's not going to get us anywhere, is it? All right, deck. Oh, wow, we're just in. And do we do this now or in our opponent's upkeep? Hmm. I think it's opponent's upkeep. 
they have a stifle here, we die. But if they had a stifle, they had one mana open anyway. Okay. Do you have the answer for our 2020? They could play a land and sacrifice a Stalker to shrink our Merit Lage. So they don't take the full 20. So they could only take... Uh, they'll take 16 if they sacrifice their big Stalker. So they have a land here. Oh no, we're just in. Love it. Oh, Merit Lage. Why do I ever play anything that doesn't have you in? Um, okay, so things that are playable here are these cards. So... I think we do want to remove their creatures. I think that's a given. Do we want endurances just as reasonable things we can be doing? I think so. Uh, Bajukabog has text as matchup. Cavern has text. Uh, Maze of Earth, Sidereal Step. These all have some pretty relevant text. So I'm not getting rid of those. I think we want to keep the Painter combo in because our opponent hasn't seen that. I don't think we want Legolas' Quick Reflexes because I don't think the cards are good. Uh, <laughs> Um, the loam is good. We can waste that like our opponent. I don't think we want all of these crop rotations. But we might need some amount of them. So we'll keep the three in. We don't have, like, discard to punch a hole through. Uh, what does this hand do? We can shut off our opponent's wasteland on turn one. And then start loaming. I think this is alright. Stalker. It is the stalker. But we can life from the loam and find our... Um, combo pieces. A wasteland. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, so now I don't really want to name wasteland. Hmm. That's an interesting choice there. I'm going to play the Yavimaya. And we'll play out the needle and see what they want to do about it. Okay, they're spending a card on it. That's fine. That makes our wasteland lines look better because our opponent's going to have less resources in play. Same underground sea. And a brainstorm. Okay, that makes this wasteland play not look great. Urza's Saga, though. Big fan of the old Urza's Saga. Let's drop that. Let's play this. I think we named black for snuff out here. Okay, we got a daze. That's fine. Now we can wasteland and... Life of the Loan, or we can just start pumping out Constructs if we think that's going to be better, which it might be. And this eventually gets us the Expedition map, which gets us our Dark Depths combo. Right, let's just get this back. If our opponent doesn't get to two mana, they can't Shoulder Zedict our combo. And we have it uncounterably from where we are now. A basic Swamp, very rude. All right, still only attack for two, though. Are we dredging this? Not this turn. Right, so we will float to mana. Going to get an expedition map, I think, here. Or do we need an expedition map right now? Can we just get a Mox Diamond? Yeah, I like the Mox Diamond here. We've been off this Bajuka Bog. And then we play out our Thespian Stage. And then we cast an Endurance. Green and one here. Let's get rid of their graveyard. Stop Merktides coming down. Obviously, they're a long way off what our opponent's up to anyway. But we have a Marrow Lage next turn. If our opponent plays a land, then we just wasteland them. If they play a fetch land and leave it up, then we don't wasteland them. We just hold it at the Dark Depths and our opponent's in a situation where they basically can't ever... All right, we continue our little plan. We don't get to block because that was Menace. I will take this life from the loam. Uh, we will wasteland our opponent here. So they could brainstorm and then daze their own brainstorm, paying to save their land. Depends how important this land is for our opponent. A fatal push. And then there's the daze. All right, so doing similar play to like I mentioned. So we'll get back wasteland, saga, and bog. And then we'll pass. We've got the time to play around the um, Shoulder's Edict. Our opponent didn't play a land. That's interesting. Uh, we don't need to... Do we need to dredge this? Uh, yeah, we'll dredge this. Okay, so we have access to our combo here. If we want it, or we can just start pumping out as a Saga tokens. 
Let me just play out the Dark Depths. So our opponent has to play out the Underground Sea this turn. Alright, this uh, little goblin is doing the work. Yep, so we're not going to play it into the obvious onboard trick here. But what we will do is make ourselves have a basic. Right, so we will wasteland our opponent here. Does our opponent have a land? If they don't have a land, then we can probably win this one. If they do have a land, then we're going to have to take some more damage and try and go for it again. All right, let's scoop it up. We got the match there. Merit Lage never fails. We had the luxury there of playing a slow game where we just grind our opponent's resources down until we know our thing is going to be good. The other option we had was to make a 2020, let them kill it, and then re-go again. But then that would mean our opponent has a load of untapped mana for a couple of turns to try and find new things, cast cantrips, and all that sort of jazz. And that's just not really suitable when we don't have anything like Exploration in our deck. All right, we have locked in the positive record now with 3 and 1. So let's go to the final round and see if we can turn it into a 4-1. Um, we have a goldfish here. I'll keep this. We haven't grindstoned anyone yet, have we? Is this going to be a chalice? It is a chalice. We don't like the chalice, but we can beat the chalice. Chalice probably means less likely to have removal spells. Like, we lose to a blood moon if that's what our opponent's working with. So let's just embrace it. Uh, we do not have a functional hand into a Blood Moon. We don't really have a functional deck into a Blood Moon in game one. Semen Spirit Guide. Name Sticker Goblin. Okay, that is not a Blood Moon. We might be dead, though. Four. A very low roll. That's good. Main Deck Chalice in the Goblins is interesting. Um, just one hit here. It's a good hit, but that's, that's uh, not unhelpful for us here. Yep, yeah, we'll take two here. Chalice on zero, be my guest. So we play this out. Next turn we can make a Merit Lage as well as trying to grindstone our opponent. So if this gets broadside bombardiers, we get a 2020 instead. Um, doesn't matter. We need to name black or blue, so our, actually we don't really care about that, so I'm not doing anything. We'll name black anyway, though. Because we can float off of the Urza Saga, play the Dark Depths, and then make a 2020. Or we can just grindstone our opponent to death next turn. So, can you kill us, opponent? The answer could very well be yes. They stick a goblin into Muxus, that's probably us in the dirt. But they need to get the high roll here, if that's what they're going for. Battle cry goblin, that is not the high roll. Um, I don't know if anything's going to happen. We have the win, like, on board here. We don't need to mess around with blocking, I don't think. Our opponent's playing main deck pyrokinesis, and power to them, I guess. All right, we moved our opponent's deck. They let us see their whole deck. Is there anything interesting here? Um, all their cards are black red because of my painter, so it's very difficult for me to just immediately look at them and understand what they are, but it looks pretty standard here. All right, we somehow managed to come away with some success there. So I think there's a selection of things that are useful, like a whole bunch of our... So well, like, there's even an argument for my break trap, but I don't think that's actually any good here. Uh, Pithy Long Broadside Bombardiers is relevant. We do not require a Bajuka Bog for this. I don't think we need a Sajiri Step either. The Maze of Ith is nice. Um, we don't need Legolas' Quick Reflexes. You may have noticed a trend uh, in this league with that card. So we're boarding in a lot of cards that Force of the uh, Once Upon a Time doesn't hit. So I think we're going to get rid of these Once Upon a Time. I don't think we have time to mess around with Life in the Loam either. I do like having these. But, uh, oh, Veil of Summer's no good here either, actually, is it? So it means we get, maybe we can have our loam and one once upon a time. We could have Caracas as like emergency, try and bounce a Muxus. But bouncing Muxus feels like a very bad thing. It's probably better than Echoing Deeps for the most part. So let's try that. So ideally what we want is our opponent to go heavy into Blood Moon. And we just win around it. Which this hand can do. Uh... We can also just start doing turn two as a saga stuff. It is off of an ancient tomb. Not a fan of that one. Our opponent's mulligan to five cards. So, fingers crossed, it's good for us. And we're very much the good guy here because we're playing the sort of janky fun pile. And now our opponent's playing like the 
tier one super scary deck. So I'll take my uh, opponent mulligans where I can get them. No offense, opponent. Turn one, ancient tomb. What are you going to do with your ancient tomb? Is it chalice? Chalice is good. A rabble master. Do we want to... I think we can kill this right now if we want to. I think that is worth doing. I would like another green source. Because I would quite like to just... Hmm, I was going to say I'd quite like to just get our crop rotation for a wasteland and take this out. But I guess we're on the saga plan. Because you should have played the grindstone there. A mountain. A goblin matron. That's pretty good. Was it sticker goblin or ringleader? Probably ringleader. Gas back up. I wish spirit guy would be pretty good here. Because then we could make a construct. So we've got something in play. And then we could crop rotate it into a wasteland. And then shred our opponent's mana. And then they're probably unlikely to be able to cast whatever they find here. And then at some point we'll try and win the game. A broadside Bombardiers. That's a good one. Pitting Needle. That can name Broadside Bombardiers. So that is pretty good. So what are we doing here? We're playing a Besaju, playing a Pithing Needle here, naming Broadside Bombardier. Holding, do we want to just crop rotate away now? I think we're just going to play this Grindstone. And get some action towards Paint and Servant combo. My Broadside Bombardier is being a 3 mana 2-2 with haste is fine. It's where it starts lava axing us in the face every turn that I have issues. Okay, so we're going to take 3 this turn, which is... The first damage our opponent's doing to us, the rest of it we did with our own dismember. Two cards in our opponent's hand. Another ancient tomb. Interesting. Um, I guess we float here. And then we will crop rotate this as a saga. So if we get ourselves a... We don't want to yavamai because we don't want to turn our opponent's lands on. Um, we do want a green source. So maybe it's just a... Good old-fashioned forest here. We're kind of relying on this endurance to do work if we do that. But I think that's what we've got going on, so we should just embrace it. We could always get the saga and start ticking that down. This is three damage a turn. The other option is to get the wasteland and make it so our opponent struggles to cast a Muxus. But then what are we actually doing with the rest of our stuff here? Oh, this is a, a tough call. I think I'm going to get the forest here. And then... Expedition map. No targets. So we've just got the biggest creature in play. Their creature does have menace, but this will stop them dealing us three damage a turn. And then we can work towards something with their expedition map. Magus of the Moon. Okay, that's totally fine. Like, we could draw a dismember and then just get a 2020. That's pretty tasty. I'm glad we didn't get anything spicy now. Okay, that's that's real good. Uh, we don't have any lands that can, we can just use to get our opponent here, unfortunately. Um, like, we can start attacking, but I don't think that's a good idea. Right, we're just going to expedition map in our opponent's turn to thin our deck slightly. Battlecry Goblin, by the looks of it. No, another Bombardiers. Okay. That's pretty good. Our dismember is looking less viable as an out here. We can just draw Painted Servant though. And that's pretty fine. Um, what do we want here? A Maze of Ith is just a mountain. Whatever we get is going to be a mountain unless we get a forest. Do we need another forest? If we can get rid of this Magus, I would quite like to have a Maze of Ith around. There's a Saga. It's not really the one, is it? Print has a mountain. Attack us for four, and we are dead on the next turn. Okay, we're going to start grindstoning our opponents, see if we can see any of their sideboard and stuff. So we have a turn to draw a Painted Servant, really. Come on, deck. That's not the one. All right, we didn't quite get to where we needed to go. Do I like how I sideboarded? I think so. We definitely had outs there that could have won us that game, so we're just going to roll back in. This time we get to be on the play, which is going to hopefully... Be good. 
means that we got a little bit more action before Zan like Magus comes down, perhaps. All right. For the 4-1, can we do it with this hand? Uh, this is a turn one. This is a turn three Marit Lage, or we can start pooping out Constructs turn two. Uh, turn three Marit Lage is probably okay. It's close. But our hand doesn't really do much else above apart from that, so I guess we'll keep this. On the play, I think I'm willing to give it a go. We do have a basic forest, which is certainly something I'm pleased about. So turn one, we flash the stage, expedition map. Turn two, we ancient tomb, crack expedition map. Turn three, we have our guy. Good old Marit Lage, my friend and yours. Mountain. No play for my opponent. That's, that's a handy one, isn't it? Um, don't have a removal spell here. Uh, how do we play around Magus of the Moon? Here's the neat thing. You don't. Uh, okay. So now whenever opponent. Cavern of Souls. Naming Goblin. All right. Is this just a... Uh, okay, they're Simmons Spirit Guide. So they're going big. How big are they going? Five. That's not Mux as big. Magus of the Moon. So we want to crack this expedition map, but we can use the mana here for it anyway, so that's fine. We'll get our Duck Depths. We have a removal spell for the Magus. This turn, we're excellent. We did not have a removal spell for the Magus. Um, so that leaves us in an interesting spot. So I think the play here is play a forest. Corporate away this ancient tomb. Uh, I guess we should float mana off of it first. Corporate away this ancient tomb for another forest. Play an Elvish Reclaimer. And then next turn, we can play the Dark Depths, and if they attack with the Magus, we can throw the Endurance in the way of it. And if they don't attack with the Magus, it buys us more time to find a Dismember. And we'll play out our Dark Depths here. And we'll pass a turn. We can also just thin our deck each turn. A goblin ringleader. Let's see how many squishy little gobbos this brings along with it. Holy moly. That is what we call a hit and a half. Yikes. Guess we block here. Suck up a little bit of damage. But next turn is going to be a lot of nonsense for us to deal with. An elvish spirit guide. What does that do? Um, so if we put this Urza Saga into the graveyard straight away, that's going to fuel our Reclaimer when we activate it. So this is actually a good play. And we need two mana to turn this into a 3-4. So we've got two 3-4s that we get to block with. And then the turn after, we can Spirit Guide some stuff? I don't know. I think we've got one more turn to try and draw our Dismember. Otherwise we are... In trouble. A name sticker goblin. How much are you going to hit? Only a five again. Our opponent's been consistently hitting fives. But they've got two more mana, so we're going to see some amount of their things. Goblin trash master. All right, and then they're going to play probably bombardiers. That's probably the best thing here. Or they might just play the rabble master. Yeah. Okay, so all of their goblins have to attack. So we get to eat two of their goblins for free here. Oh, I'm way better than I thought it was going to go. Um, if we're killing this, again, I think we're going to want the Maze of Ith just to potentially buy us a turn. So we just kind of gobbled up their guys for free there. It's pretty nice. That's a very strange looking dismember, isn't it? Uh, things get awfully sketchy right about now. Yeah, so Bombardiers gets to throw something at us if it wants to. But we do get to kill it. We get to thin our deck once more. But the four life from Dismember is becoming increasingly burdensome. Like Trashmaster means no amount of pain and servant nonsense is going to get us anywhere. So we've got a lot of bad draws in our deck. I might just go for another Rabble Master. Ooh, Battle Cry Goblin. Interesting they didn't tap. I guess all their lands and mountains actually aren't there. Yeah, no. It doesn't matter how they've tapped at all. Uh, shot, giving their little team some go faster stripes there. 
They all have to attack. I'm not a fan of our opponent having to attack with everything here. Okay. Yeah, this is a lot. Why is it makes the moon a goblin? Then it has to attack. That'd be nice. Okay, so this Rebel Master is big. But if we kill the Trash Master with like an endurance, let's say, then at the end of combat, this will die. What is the scariest thing on this board? It's probably this Battlecry Goblin, isn't it? If our opponent's last mystery card in hand is Pyrokinesis, then yikes indeed. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sacrifice this. We go and get ourselves. Nothing of merit, I think, is what we're looking for here, isn't it? Um, another green source. I don't think it matters here. This might make us so low that we can't even do dismember as an out. Yikes. We can play a dismember, but we will die. I think we just bricked for too many turns. Endurance. Uh, they play the Bombardiers. They kill us on attacks. Yep. Yeah, our opponent's got us there. We had four dismembers in our deck that could have got us there. We were one turn too slow to make our guy before the Magus. We're not great at turboing with this list. Uh, but like turn, turn three is kind of doable for us. But we're not realistically looking at going before them. Not like actual turbo deaths. All right. 3-2, not bad for a bit of a weird mishmash of a list. But let's talk about what works in it and what doesn't and why. So, the first thing you're probably thinking of is... This Legolas is quick reflex, it didn't do an awful lot. Now, theoretically, it's there to protect our Painter, as well as protecting our Merit Lage. We did, didn't play against the decks where this is good, because this is good against blue-white control decks, and nobody's really playing blue-white control decks. The control decks in the format at the moment are Grixis and Bugstalk. There are a few people still playing, like, the Bant, or the five-color Leyline Binding Beanstalk decks, but those decks are so bad against Bugstalk, that people just aren't really running them. So Legolas' Quick Reflex just isn't really very useful in the meta right now. I've actually taken them out of Turbo Nets, for example. Um, even though I was only running one in the board and uh, one in the main and the others in the board, they're all gone now. I just don't think they're where you want to be. So that's definitely a weak slot in this deck. I will say that the synergy behind having like Urza Saga in our deck as a thing we're just doing anyway is fine. Like Lands decks run Urza Saga. We've got a lot in common with a Lands deck. So that's fine. Having this Painter Servant combo to then turn on our Veil of Summers and make those better, it does feel like if we were to... Um, let's move the actual useful targets out here. So if we were to remove like this side of the deck, that could give us 12 slots to basically just make this deck better. And we could run things like Exploration, and some more life from the loams. Obviously, we're nearing like a lands deck at that point. But we do still have this sort of slight turbo element and the Elvish Reclaimers. I've played decks like this before. Um, but if we did that, we could also have like a small Green Sun Zenith package with Ramanap Excavator, a, like some nice little tasty silver bullets like Collector Roof when that's good. Scavenger News, maybe. Some main deck endurance. So we can have like a little package in there which would be quite nice, and I think that might be a more effective way to play this. Because at the end of the day, we're playing two decks with kind of differing pattern, uh, with differing cards that make them useful. Because like Lands decks don't really want Veil of Sun. We don't really care about our hand getting discarded that much. We don't really care about hand um, again about counter spells. And we're trying to win with Lands anyway. So the Veil is just not great to protect a lot of the stuff we're doing. Like if we protect and reclaim, a great. But generally speaking, it's not that fantastic. So we do kind of have this whole package of cards. It isn't really working. Now, we did get a grindstone kill. So it's not like they're not doing anything. But I think if you were to play like 100 games with this deck, there would be a considerable number of those games where you have dead cards because of this plan. Whereas if we just played good cards in our deck, you know, if you play a Ramanap Excavator, worst case scenario, it's at least a guy on board. You know, it's a 2-3, which is a little bit better than Pain of Servant. Um, but that's something that we could have within our package. But it would only be a one-off in that point anyway. And the chances of it being able to recur wastelands and things 
But I guess when you start going that way, you end up sort of falling into green white depths again as a different thing. So it's kind of difficult to innovate in this little space. I have played some mono green depth decks in the past. I played one during depth December and I played it a few months before that and I did quite well with it. But instead of playing like this package, I played cards that were just solidly good. So I was playing, I think I had more ramp in the deck as well. And I was playing, yeah, because I had expirations, I think. And I, was, I just ran Khan as just a thing that we could do because we're accelerating our curve. Let's stick a Khan. This can win the game on its own and do cool things, right? Whereas Painted Servant doesn't do anything on its own, neither does the Grindstone. So just having these things that you can go, okay, we've got this. We don't even have room for the Shadow Spear, so we can just do like Shadow Spear gain lifelines against goblins where we may have been able to actually get there if we could do that. So that was another thing that didn't really work out for us. So I think there's definitely some space within mono green depths and there's probably some space within mono green painter as well. But I think combining the two stretches you a little bit thin. Like if I was going to do this, I would be playing ancient stirrings in this deck. Uh, and maybe maxing out more on these. But again, I don't think that's right. I have played Mono Green Painter with Ancient Stirrings in a much more heavily colourless deck, and that was actually really sweet. Um, you know, we're, we're not winning Legacy Challenges with it sort of sweet, but it's like the realms of winning a, a league are certainly possible. But there's quite a, lot of, quite a lot of tension in this deck, I think. And Once Upon a Time is, is a fine card, but... It's never a card that is amazing. It's just a card that is fine. Um, and quite often it's something you're going to be sideboarding out. It's not bad to have things that you can sideboard out in your deck. I also think that we could probably trim some of this and have room for like main deck Caracas. So we free up another sideboard slot. Which would be handy. But yeah, th th this deck performed alright. We nearly hit the 4-1, which was kind of the highest I was expecting to hit with it. I thought we'd be somewhere around... 2, 3 to 4, 1. And we landed right in the middle of that. So, job done, I would say. So, I hope the person who donated to make this deck happen on the channel is happy with how this went. Uh, I think we showcased the different elements of the deck and we have talked about why there's a lot of tension and why things aren't working, which is always an important thing to address. It has inspired me to maybe play some sort of Ancient Stirrings deck again. Because I think that is one of the big draws for playing a sort of spicy mono green blue that uh, mono green brew that is trying to play like loads of lands and colorless creatures. So that's something to think about. And actually, no, I think the, the I think I did play a painter Marilege, uh, a painter dark depths build before actually that was running ancient stirrings. Now I think about it as well. But anyway, uh, I think that's us done for today. So if you would like a donation deck on the channel, you can join my Patreon in the description below and get one every month if you go in the higher tier. Or if you just want one that you really want to see me play but don't really want to commit to every month, then by all means, just get in touch. And I can do you a donation deck as a one-off. I get quite a few of those on the channel and it's always nice to see what you lovely people are out there brewing. All right, I'm done for today. So remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.